pretending that you're like going to a house party and pretending to be famous and being kind of like a brat and stuff like that. Well, I mean, let's do something kind of fun today. I want to do purple. Yeah. It's three of them. Um, there's a matte, there is an iridescent, and then there's the darker matte, so. You love an iridescent. Cool, let's do it. Let's have now. a purple, a purple moment today. Yes. Cool, can I look? I love it. It's cool. I really like it. It's very like Barbarella, 60s vibe. But with like a little pop of color. Yeah, I love it. We started, remember, with that waterproof base, iridescent lavender, which is such an incredible product. Um, yeah. Just to give us like a base all over. Mm -hmm. Then we went through with the brightest Aqua XL eye pencil, um, the shimmery one. Nice. We did the winged liner on top. Imagine an invisible line from the bottom. That's mm -hmm. the angle the wing should be to right. complement the shape of your eye. Then in the lash line at the bottom, did a little bit of the dark Aubergine. Aubergine. Eggplant emoji. Yep. And then my fave, the mm -hmm. lavender to pop the eye open. We did okay. that right on the water line. And I'm going to take a little and pull it out as well to kind of fill in the space in between the two wings. And then we popped on some excessive lash, yes. top and bottom mascara. I did a little bit more on the bottom since it's kind of a 60s vibe. Let's do another look. Okay, great. So what are we doing next? Tell me about boom clap. Yeah. I guess it's just about like celebrating love. It's about that kind of like feeling that you get when you're in love. So I'm gonna do something a little different that no one really does. And what's really cool with this is it's a gray. So we'll use a little bit of that to give you some smoke on the eye. Boom clap. Love it. Sparkly, Moody. just like the song. Cool. Start with your base, the aqua cream. Did a light layer of that all over the entire eyelid and just kind of have it fade up. Then, to give us a really, really, really crisp line, we broke the tip off the Aqua XL, the yellow one. Added two little drops of the, uh, the secret seal. Took our lining brush, mixed it around, got enough product, tested it, and then we make a cool liquid liner. Then we took the dark gray, which we thought was a little bit more special than doing just black or brown. Added that to the bottom of the waterline, kind of blended it out, married it with the yellow line we did. Then we finished it off with a little bit of the excessive lash on top and bottom, and that was this look. All right, should we move on to another look? Yeah, let's do it. What is happening now? Maybe, maybe break the rules. Love it. Yeah. Um, I guess it's just like a kind of dumb party song about being a rebel. Well, I say we do kind of a monochromatic eye. Let's use the blues and give you your classic wing, but in maybe like a little bit of an ombre. Ooh, ombre. It'd be my ombre, man. I love that. Okay, cool. I think we should start um, with our depth, so our darkest color on the outside, and we'll just kind of fade it in as we go. Okay. Oh, it's like a blue rainbow. Yeah. Very cute. Cute. Nice. Fun. In order to do this look, we did those three blue pencils. Mm -hmm. we start with the darkest one, and this is the one that we took and started the initial shape of the wing. So you draw your little product, and I like to take a little brush, grab it on the end, and I kind of just pull it out. Then our second color, which is the iridescent one, so you get a little bit more of the sheen on the middle of the lid. Okay. Uh, blended those two together, and we left a little blank space on the inner corner because we added our third one, which was the bright sky blue. Then give us a little bit of round out with some more mascara, and you've got a simple blue ombre. Well, there's our three looks. Amazing. <laughs> you know? Well, it's, I mean, it's fun to get such a great body of work that you've put out creatively, and then it's fun for me to kind of dive into that and make something kind of fun and creative based on the music you've given us. What is your favorite look from today? I think this one. Mine's purple. Purple? Yeah. Boom. Life, Life is, is a stage. stage. <laughs> solely around makeup and makeup tutorials, reviews of products, things of the like. Because I had a channel that revolved solely around makeup, you can bet your ass I had 
a crap ton of makeup. I had drawers and drawers and drawers of the stuff, multiples of the same product. I was overflowing in makeup. I was one of those people who would do makeup collection tours and I just had ridiculous amounts of makeup that I would never ever get around to even using. That was me. That was definitely me. Now I've whittled my makeup collection down to one drawer in my bathroom. I definitely feel a lot better about it, but by all means, if you love your makeup and you love having tons of it and it makes you happy, go ahead and keep it. I'm not judging you, I used to be that person. But for me, I really, really wanted to downsize and so I had to adapt a different way of thinking and I had to do a lot of things to finally get myself to that point. The first thing I did was I started to think like a traveler. I've always loved the idea of living out of your suitcase. And being that traveling is now becoming something that I want to make a higher priority in my life, I want to make it easier for me to travel by lessening the things that I have to leave behind. I started asking myself, what would I bring with me? What would I use if I only had a limited amount of space? Would I want to reserve a ton of space for my makeup? The answer was no, of course. I don't want to be lugging a ton of makeup with me around all the time, especially if I'm planning on taking a year to travel. So I had to cut it down to everything that I would really actually use. A good way to look at it is there's a tag that goes around the beauty community called the Desert Island tag, I believe, and it's basically asking you what products would you take with you on a desert island if you had no choice. I don't know why you would have makeup with you on a desert island, but if you could only pick a few products, what would your desert island products be? The second step from there for me was hiding the non-essentials. Anything that didn't make that list or anything that I felt like I wasn't going to use on a weekly basis regularly got put away, got put into storage. I started hiding them away, pretending that I didn't have them. This was because I wasn't ready to let them go completely. I didn't want to toss them out and be like, oh wait, I actually really needed that. So what I did was I just put everything into a box, put it away in my closet, and I went a couple months without it. And there were a few products that I had to go back into the box and be like, wait, I do actually use this. I do actually want this and need this, so to speak. And I pulled it back out and added it to my main collection. After a few months, anything that didn't get pulled out of the storage box got either donated to friends, tossed away if it was too old, or otherwise gotten rid of. The third thing that I did is I started gauging things by need and love and then want. Anything I actually needed and used regularly like eyeliner, mascara, um, primers, they got to stay so long as I didn't have multiples on, of them. And anything else that I loved that I just could not let go of because I would probably like exaggeratingly die without them, that also got to stay too. Anything that I didn't absolutely need, absolutely love, got tossed or given away. If there was a product that I was on the fence about, I didn't really like it that much, or it was okay, but I don't really use it that often, those stuff got tossed. And the last thing I did to go from hoarder to minimalist makeup-wise is I stopped putting so much value in my makeup. And by that I mean I stopped letting myself put happiness and value into these physical products that only kept me happy for a little bit. There are a lot of girls out there, and I was one included, that anytime a new product came out, anytime a new lipstick came out, I would rush out and I would get it and I would be so happy to have it and it would be so exciting and it was just the novelty of having a new product, I guess. And I stopped allowing myself to feel that. It was nice, it's nice every once in a while, but I stopped wanting new things. It took a lot to actually go from thinking about this to practicing this, but I started collecting memories, not things. And that's something I heard a lot online, to collect memories and not things, and not to place value in these things. And the more I thought about traveling, the more I wanted to cut down on these things because the less I bought, that was more money towards me being able to go and do something and I would much rather have the opportunity to go do something than to have this thing and not like it after a couple months. I also began to take joy in using everything that I already have. It was extremely satisfying for me to get down to the last bits of makeup and actually have empty products for once because in the past I had so much makeup I basically never finished anything. But those are all the steps I took to going from makeup hoarder to makeup minimalist. 
I'm by no means an expert on minimalism, but I, I've, been, I've been working on it. What are a few things you've done to kind of cut down on your stuff? Something you've done to take a step towards minimalism? Tell me in the comments.